About 11 p.m. there looks quiet right now, but this morning's attacks didn't happen until about 5 a.m. their time. So leaders are closely monitoring the area for any other possible attacks overnight. And of course, to get more information on what exactly is happening in Ukraine right now and what led up to all of this, we're joined by High Point University political science professor Dr. John Graber. So, first off, Doctor, thanks for joining us today. Of course, happy to be here. All right. I guess the first question a lot of people are asking is why did Putin do this? Why is he doing this? Why is he doing this? Uh, with Putin, it's, it's sometimes hard to read the tea leaves. Um, his stated reasons for, for this right now are, one, um, to try to regain uh, control of Ukraine. Um, he speaks of Ukraine often as, as sort of the, the lost jewel of, of the Russian Empire. Um, and so he's long wanted sort of, I think, to, to reclaim authority over, over Ukraine. Um, two, uh, he speaks a lot about um, wanting to prevent Ukraine from ever joining NATO, uh, which is not something that is currently on the table or any time in the near future. Um, and, and three, I think he's um, quite concerned about um, about um, exerting influence over over Ukraine, um, and it has some interests in, in continually um, exerting influence in that sphere of influence. And of course, the reaction both here in the United States and from other countries was to impose sanctions and then further sanctions. What exactly are those doing, and how is that impacting Russia and the people of Russia? Yes, of course. Um, so, uh, in terms of um, those sanctions, most of them are going to be on, on Russian um, businesses, uh, Russian tech firms, um, Russian, um, certainly on uh, high profile individuals within the sort of the Russian oligarchy. Um, the, so far, the sanctions uh, that I'm aware of are not targeting uh, energy producers in, in Russia because of uh, Europe's um, dependence on Russian oil and gas. Um, so we're, I think, for the time being, holding off on those types of sanctions. Um, but those sanctions, um, from what I understand, will be exceptionally crippling uh, to um, the Russian elite, um, and um, they will be quite devastating for the Russian economy, I think. You talked about oil already, and we've heard a lot about gas prices, the potential of them rising here in the United States. What are some of the other ramifications we could feel here as Americans? You know, I, th I think a lot depends on um, how the, the, the conflict bears out. Uh, if we see that uh, Russia is able to, to sort of take control of Ukraine quickly, uh, depose its government and uh, install a new regime um, on a relatively short timetable, uh, I think markets will be relatively volatile in the, in the near future. Um, and I certainly think uh, oil and gas prices will, will, will increase. Um, but I don't see any long-term effects much beyond that. Um, if, however, um, Russia has miscalculated and this uh, invasion takes a lot longer than anticipated uh, and it gets bogged down in some sort of low-level insurgency, um, then, then I could see um, quite a bit of market volatility um, for the foreseeable future and, and certainly um, more inflationary pressure um, on oil and gas prices as well as other other um, products that, that may, may come out of Russia and, and Ukraine. All right, Doctor, we appreciate your insight. And for more on this test, we're going to send it back to you.